In this section, we're going to be talking about programming itself. We're going to talk about what is programming, what is a programming language, and we'll take a look back at some of the evolutions that we've gone through to get to where we are today in the programming world. Now, the first programming myth is that programming is hard to learn. Well, programming does take some time to learn, and you will have to study, but really it's not all that hard. What you need to do is be able to think logically. If you can do that, you can program. Another programming myth, Java is the best thing since sliced bread. Well, Java is just another language that programmers use to program a computer. It can really only do what a programmer programs it to do. So in that respect, it's really just like any other language. And it is one of the languages that we will be looking at as we go through this course. Programmers are geeks. Well, you know, I don't consider myself a geek. And most programmers I know are very ordinary people. They also earn a very good living. So if you're be thinking about becoming a programmer, try not to worry too much about the image. Let's now start learning about the steps you'll take to become a programmer and to write a computer program. To become a programmer, you have to learn about tasks. Basically, programming is the process of performing tasks. Now, we learn tasks all the way through our life. We learn how to walk, we learn how to talk, we learn to ride a bike, and many other things that we do throughout our life. Basically, when we learn these things, we basically learn a series of steps that have to be performed to accomplish a certain task. So computer programming is really just a sequence of instructions or tasks or steps for the computer. So the process of having a computer perform a task is computer programming. A computer program is that set of instructions in a specific syntax or a specific language that makes up the tasks for the computer per to perform. So programming involves solving problems. Now, most of us have solved problems all through our life. It's one of the things we do as human beings. What we have to do is solve a problem and give the solution to that problem to the computer to execute. So let's take just a simple problem that you would be required to solve. Now, the, the idea here is that you break this problem into small little steps. So our example here is to calculate employees' pay. Step one would be to get the employee's hourly wage, whatever that wage is. You then get the number of hours that were worked for that week. Step three would be if the number of hours worked is less than or equal to 40, then you simply multiply the number of hours by the wage. Step four would be if the number of hours worked is greater than 40, then take the number of hours that's greater than 40 and multiply that number by one and a half times the wage. Step five would be then to add the numbers that you did in step three and step four. So as you can see, I simply took a series of steps that you would typically do manually, and I broke it into a problem statement. And I actually came up with a solution, step by step, of how we would solve this problem. This is the beginnings of writing a computer program. Let's look at another example. Another example would be balancing your checkbook. For example, what you need to do is you need to write the check, enter the check number, enter who the check was written to, enter the date the check was written, enter the amount of the check, and then step five would be subtract the amount that you did, the amount of the check, with the previous balance in the checkbook. And then you would record that amount. Once again, this is something you do in everyday life. You balance your checkbook. Well, hopefully you do. But even if you don't, you know the steps to do it. And this series of steps can be broken down into a programming language that you could then write a checkbook program so that you could automatically record your checkbooks and have the computer figure out the balance for you automatically. So there are a lot of steps that you go through to construct a computer program. You first need to analyze the problem. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? You would then document the necessary steps to take to solve that particular problem. Now, typically what you would do is you would then test those steps manually, actually break them down, do them on paper or whatever is appropriate to see if they actually work. Then you can take the steps that you have documented manually and translate those into a computer language. And then finally, you would test those steps 
on the computer to see if the computer came up with the same answer that you did manually. So the steps you'll do to actually make a computer program are very simple. And it's really nothing more than taking what you know in the real world and manual steps that you do in the real world and breaking those down into something that the computer can perform for you. Well, let's talk about programming languages. A programming language is really nothing more than a set of special words, symbols, and even syntax rules that determine how a program is constructed. For example, in C or C++, you would have things like if, else, and then an open brace and a closed brace, and then something like I++. You would also have a keyword like while. That's C and C++. That's the syntax of that language. In VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, in that language you'll also have very similar constructs like if and then some condition and then a then and then you would have an end if statement and you would have a do while statement. This is the syntax and the rules that go with VBA that we'll take a look at throughout this video. Let's talk a little bit about how programming got started. In the beginning there was machine language where programmers actually had to wire every switch to turn it on and off. Now this required that they knew every switch in that computer and they knew which series of zeros and ones to send to those switches to get them to turn on or off to get a single letter or something to display on the screen. And you can see the example here, that's quite a bit of numbers that they would have to memorize. Now machine language has its advantages in that it is very fast because everything is done in the language of the computer. That means that you can program everything within that computer. However, there's a lot of disadvantages with machine language also. Those disadvantages are that it's very time consuming and unfortunately it's very prone to error and debugging this is actually really time consuming. Well, people don't program machines like this too much anymore. It's still done, but not too much. Most of us are going to be using a higher level language than machine language. But everything usually today is still broken down into a mnemonic form of machine language called assembly. Assembly language is simply a group of mnemonic instructions that we can learn.